Um, like I said earlier, the guards were murdered in the prisons as well. And it wasn't the big bad gang members, it was people like Brian Crenshaw, partially blind shoplifter, failed to produce his ID for the evening meal, the Red Death. The guards pulverised him, broke his neck, he went into a coma and died. It was caught on CCTV and his family members were paid millions. Scott Norberg was a mentally ill man wandering the neighbourhood. Cops brought him in. The guards started pulverising him and electroshocking him with taser guns. A female guard tried to stop it. She goes, stop, stop, his face has turned blue. Even after they brushed her off and kept shocking him and punching him. The inmates watching in the holding cells started yelling, why are you still beating him? He's already dead. And even after that, they were still electroshocking the corpse and beating it. That was caught on CCTV. And his family members got millions in compensation as well. And like I said, this jail's paid out 50 million in, in lawsuits. The guards that were found responsible in the federal court system for murdering those prisoners, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, the boss of the jail, promoted them and gave them pay rises to show how, how hardcore he is on crime and criminals. Because of all the human rights violations, Obama's at war with this guy right now. He said, I'm an elected official, I'm going to do whatever I want. Students protesting the human rights violations last year all chained themselves to the sheriff's building. He had them all arrested and thrown in the jail. So the guard said to me, the world has no idea what's going on in here. So with a little pencil sharpened on the door, I started writing it all down. I couldn't mail it out because the guards can open your mail as well. I recruited my aunt. She would come and visit me on the weekends. In maximum security, the visits are through plexiglass windows. Like in Silence of the Lambs when Clarice Starling first meets Hannibal Lecter. So I couldn't pass anything to her either. I could release sp um, stuff to her through the visitation guards. So what I wrote, I hid it in legal paperwork. Took it to the visitation guards. The first time I did it, my heart's going like crazy thinking they're going to spot it. But they're trained to look for contraband, like syringes, um, drugs. He's looking through it. And at the end of the visit, he would give it to my aunt because he thought it was just all legal paperwork. She smuggled them out of the jail. It got put on the internet, and I didn't get many hits at the time until I was moved to a different prison and my name came out. And it just it snowballed, the BBC ran it, the Guardian ran it, and that jail that had all the cockroaches and that stuff going on was closed down two years later. But he just basically opened a new high-tech house of horrors down the street. So he's still, he's still in business and there's still a hell of a lot of people getting murdered in there.